Hi ladies and gentlemen. Today is the 2nd of January 2014 and I remember putting up a, a video, I don't know, I guess it was probably in the fall sometime, somewhere in there. And uh, you know, said I didn't really want to do much more of this and you've heard me say that a lot of times. Well on that particular one, I don't remember which one it was, uh, there was a comment on there where this individual said, you can't help yourself. You're driven to it. Your heart's in it. You have to do it. You can't avoid it because it's your passion. <laughs> well, I suppose there's some truth to that. We all like to think that we, we have something important to contribute. And in fact, I think that's true. Unfortunately, through the school system and through the water system, through social engineering in general, as most of you that I, I see on a regular basis understand. The creativity of, of, of people is being thwarted, uh, even when they have something that is exciting and new and uplifting, it's usually met with a great deal of opposition. Why do I open up with that? Well, primarily because as I've said all along, and, and I hear this so often now from commentators and, and radio personalities, uh, blog talks, things like that, that there's a spiritual war going on. There really is. That's, that's really what this is. And it's going to come into the physical all the time. As a matter of fact, a lot of people try to separate the spiritual from the physical. But you really can't do that because they exist together here, okay? Uh, for those of you who, who are Bible readers, you may remember when Abraham planted a tree, and I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, he, he pitched his tent and he planted a tree. That's the other thing that you, you have to get elsewhere. But he pitched his tent and planted a tree halfway between the cities of Bethel, which meant God's house, and Ai, which meant you know, the world. And he's right in between, so there's a balance. And we have to remember to keep that balance. But there are forces in the world today, and they are satanic Luciferian forces. And if you go back through my videos, uh, Divide the Word 1 and 2 is a good example of this. These evil forces are out there to cut off our connection to who we really are, number one, where we come from, and the fact that we do have a God that is our Father and our Mother. It's our, our heavenly parents. And this connection that we have with them, it's been a war for a long time to keep us from reaching out and getting that. So I've talked about the chemtrails and, you know, the water and the food and all the poisons that we have that are shutting us down to keep us from getting this light that's coming in that's going to change us. And we'll also change the evil ones, and they don't want that. So they're doing everything they can to stop it. And I've done a couple of videos on that. I won't waste a lot of time. But the very first thing I wanted to say is that so that you know that I am aware of this battle that's going on, this warfare upon mankind to, to shut us down and to take our minds off the things that are really important and give us instead a very artificial environment and, and we're made to believe that that's what the real world is and what real eternity is and it's not, okay? Families, loved ones, those are the things that are important and we need to keep those forefront in everything we do. And don't be fooled. Don't, don't perish for lack of knowledge. As I've said before, the worst thing you can do is stay asleep and not make yourself aware of things. Having said all that, I did have a few things I wanted to bring up. The first is about Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. You know, I've told you before that people like him, uh, General Boykin, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, Myself, SEAL, SEAL uh, for, uh, former SEAL Ben Smith, uh, all of us get attacked 
um, and sometimes on a very personal level. You know, our personal lives are our business. It's how we stand for liberty and freedom that really matters. And that's why I don't get upset about homosexuals. Here I go diverging again. Because what you do in your bedroom and in your personal time is your business, as long as you don't try to, you know, any of us, whatever we do in our bedrooms, not try to push on others. Some might say, well, Roy, you did that. Well, not really. I was, I was on the defensive. I, I came back in my specific case because I had been attacked, and it was on a constitutional basis. See, I wasn't out there looking for it actually came to me. So, you know, showing love and respect in, in, in public is a good thing. You know, kissing, as long as you're not doing the deep throat type of stuff. You know, I mean, normal affection is a good thing to show in public. It is, it is good. But the other stuff, of course, we need to keep under wraps, you know. Well, getting back to Lieutenant Colonel Allen West. Uh, you know, I don't know how they got it, but, and the link is below in the description box so you can go look at this. Uh, they got a letter that he sent, or that he's not even admitting the letter, and I, I'm not saying he has to, and, and frankly, if, it, if he did write it, I think it's great, and you'll see why in a minute. But he talked about uh, a porn star. Now you're going, whoa, what's that? <laughs> well, you'll see. Uh, this man is in combat. Uh, he's a commander of a battalion, He's a man. He's a red-blooded American man, okay? He's not a transgender. He's not a, a metro. He's certainly not, you know, homosexual. He's a man that loves a woman. And this letter was very intimate to his wife. And you'll see the details on it below. But the point is, is that what did they hook on to? And I don't know how they got this. They probably, they probably got it out of his, e his emails. I, it, no doubt NSA went in there and pulled it out to discredit this man. Gave it to, you know, this, this reporter, this, this f piece of filth that wrote this story. Because this man, Alan West, was writing this letter to his wife and said, you know, God gave you to me and authorizes you to be my porn star. Something to that effect. Will you be my porn star? I won't take a no, any, no, I won't take no for an answer. I mean, it was a beautiful letter for, for men who felt this passion, this, this love on a spiritual and a physical level for this woman that was his wife, that is his wife. And they want to try to demonize that. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't wake up to what these people are doing, and you know, that's why you need to get behind people like Alan West. Don't listen to these other things that are below the surface, these personal issues. How do they stand on the Constitution, on liberty, on freedom, on life, on love? That's what's important. We all, we all have these little small idiosyncrasies, but how do we treat others? Do we tear them down, especially you know this guy that's doing that to Colonel Allen West? What would you think about somebody like that exposing you to the entire world? Actually, it's probably a good thing for Colonel West, and I hope he looks at it this way, because it does show that he's a red-blooded American man. And that when he was off, away from his wife, that the one person that was on his mind more than any other, of course his children too, I mean, but you know, he wasn't out there you know, running around with other women or whatever. And if, it, if your personal life involves that, that's fine. My point is that this man was sending a letter of devotion, admiration, love, and passion to his wife and he's he's being vilified for the verbiage that he used which was nobody else's business in the first place good on you sir good on you colonel west i do hope you and i meet someday okay <sighs> um fukushima i gotta go there you know, that's, I've been on this since it happened in 2011. A lot of people laughed at me and all of that. Uh, people that are getting different types of cancers and, you know, thyroid problems, you know, young children especially on the West Coast, um, some of the other things that have happened. You know, they laugh at you because, you know, that's silly. That's so far away. And, you know, most people don't even understand. Yeah, okay, the, the, the government and, the, and the, the people out there who were for all this nuclear power are going to lower that, you know. And Coulter, radiation is good for you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
USS Ronald Reagan. I hope that you're catching this in the news. You may not be. USS Ronald Reagan is an aircraft carrier. It was there at Fukushima trying to help at the time of the accident. And at least 70 of the sailors on that aircraft carrier have come down with cancer. Okay. So anybody who thinks that radiation, you know, some types of radiation are good. And I'm not going to go into what they are here because, you know, it'll take too much time. But the radiation that comes out of a nuclear meltdown or a nuclear weapon is not good for you. I'm sorry, Ann Coulter, you're wrong. All right. So we've got that situation. They're, they're, these sailors have a, a suit against TEPCO the company that runs the facility and of course the Japanese government for this cover-up saying it was safe when it was not. But the real question I have here, this was a, a nuclear powered aircraft carrier with radiation monitoring equipment. I smell something really fishy here. Why didn't they warn those sailors? You know, they're taking the water in that was cut, cut from the sea to do their bathing and their drinking and their cooking and all that stuff. They desalinate it, but it won't you know, take away the radiation. Plus, sweeping up this nuclear snow off the deck. My gosh, I, I cannot believe the officers in the Navy are that ill-trained. I don't believe this. I just don't. I, I, not that I don't believe the story that the sailors did get irradiated. They did. And they're sick from it. But the fact that those in their command didn't understand the situation and weren't taking the proper precautions, I, I'm just flabbergasted. Anyway, so there's another evidence that this thing is serious, okay? The upper, uh, you know, in the northern hemisphere, we've been having these background radiation readings that keep going up. And remember, the U.S. government, the EPA, lowered the danger levels for radioactivity. What I mean by lowered is they actually raised them. In other words, if, if you if you could take five, they said, well, and they and they said before that that was the danger level was at five as an example, so that they didn't have to address the issues. They said, well, now it's a hundred. The safe level is actually 100, it's not 5. Now, it's an oversimplification, but that's what they did. Instead of telling people of the danger, they just raised what they considered to be, what had been long considered to be the danger levels. They just raised it by hundreds of percentage points, sometimes thousands. Interesting, isn't it? They really care about you. 14 million <laughs> packages of potassium iodide have just been purchased by the Department of Health and Human Services. You can bet they're not for you. Okay, they're going to be for the continuity of government people, they're going to be for the police, they're going to be for the fire people, they're going to be for the government bureaucrats, the military, the DHS. If you folks think the FEMA is going to take care of you when this radiation, then it's going to go up even more than it has. How do I know that? Well, you just need to understand how this stuff works, number one. Number two, watch the news. Big wave of debris from Fukushima, from the tsunami. Irradiated debris is coming to the north, actually almost all of the west coast of North America. How much will go where, I don't know. It'll you know depend on the currents. But... You know, we had this big thing in Monterey Bay here just a few weeks ago where they had this big feeding frenzy, you know, the whales and the dolphins and all that, at a time of year where they don't do that. They're, they're not supposed to be there then. But they were because something drove the phytoplankton and the, the anchovies, I think it was, sardines, whatever they were, into that area at a time of the year where they're not normally there. But they were obviously trying to escape this this radiation that they could feel, this danger in the water. Well, this whole thing is moving now. It's right at the west coast of the United States. Alaska, that whole region there. Um, I've been talking about this for a long time. Again, people laugh at you and think you're silly. Hey, <laughs> right now there's steam leaving from the reactor number three. And they're, they're having homeless people homeless people? They're going to pay homeless people minimum wage to go in there and clean up? Why? Because nobody else is going to do it. That's why. Do you realize what will happen if you 
make a mistake and bring too many of those spent fuel rods into close proximity. Critical mass will be reached very quickly and there'll be another accident worse than the first one because this time <laughs> it's all going to go out into the ocean. They're going to have to they're going to have to evacuate most of Japan and and I've even heard scientists say that they may have to evacuate the west coast of the United States because of the radioactive plume that'll be coming that way. So why did the government get all this potassium iodide, which by the way is not the best treatment to keep your thyroid from picking it up? We're talking about the radioactive iodine isotope that's coming across. Uh, you know, the, the radioactive iodine is absorbed into your thyroid very quickly, so the idea is to take iodine to saturate the thyroid so it's not looking for more iodine to pick up and it won't pick up the radioactive iodine. But you can't do that once you're already exposed. I mean, you, you should, you should still take it, but you're really not doing it the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to saturate that thyroid prior to exposure. Most of us aren't going to do that. Even the DHS is going to do that, and you guys don't even know. And <laughs> you think you're going to make it through this by being our slave masters. You know, I, I see this degeneration of the, of the people everywhere. And it saddens me, as you all know. I see it on the TV. I see it in the news. I see it on billboards. I see it, you know, at restaurants. I see it everywhere. It's not just going out and relaxing anymore. It's being almost to the point of being disgusting about how blind the people are. It's frustrating. You know, because of lack of knowledge, the people perish, and you are going to perish. That's the plan. Those of you who don't make any preparation, the biggest preparation, what's the number one preparation you can make? Being aware, choosing the right side, doing the right thing, choosing the good instead of the bad, life instead of death, love instead of hate, light instead of darkness. But no, we're not doing that. And I've been at this thing on YouTube for how long now? <laughs> yeah, well, I've talked a little bit about the meteors coming in. Uh, we're going through the ice and debris trail and there's been some you naysayers out there who are saying, oh, that's not such a big deal. You know, all you need is one of those in the right place and you're going to have a problem landing, you know, the big chunks. And I've told people to be prepared for all kinds of disasters, whether man-made or natural, or just you lose your job. And a lot of people now, you know, they're saying, well, what should we get? Well, if you can afford a really nice food supply and all those things, you know, get that. But if, if you're stuck for time, money, and you know, those things, 25 to 50 pound sacks of white rice, 25 to 50 pound sacks of pinto beans or black beans or something like that. That's a perfect meal, protein, you get a lot of other nutrients, so it'll keep you alive. As I said on an email I sent out to some of my friends, you're gonna fart a lot, <laughs> but at least you'll be alive to fart, okay? <laughs> then you'll wanna make sure you have water. Good, have a good absolute two micron filter at the least, you know? Uh, something you can power uh, with with gravity, you know, not something you don't have to have a pump for. Uh, you're going to want to have salt, okay, that's important, and raw sugar. Those are the basic staples that you need to stay alive. And then, of course, and I'm going to say here on YouTube, you better have a weapon. I suggest, you know, you know there are different things you can get, but I'm going to make a suggestion here. Uh, a, a good 9mm handgun a good 12 gauge shotgun and uh, a, a high quality full tang sheath knife are really absolutely important tools to have not only for defending yourself but for you know taking care of you know game or food that you can get if you need it okay uh, the meteors aren't the only problem we've got like I said other man-made and natural disasters going on I've uh, been watching a lot of the sun activity that's been happening and how it's affecting our our uh, our shields, the Earth's shields, electromagnetic shields, and uh, there is a really good possibility, I would think, that that 
some of the solar activity is is causing some pressure that's causing these volcanoes to act and of course you know there are different other gravitational forces at work as well but anyway we have uh, a volcano erupting in Italy one in uh, Indonesia uh, one in El Salvador um, one of the Canary Islands uh, you've got you know the caldera in Yellowstone it's all heating up but some of these are active and spewing out now um, you know are these the end times well the real key for what we're supposed to do is watch the sign of the times you know stay aware and, and that's the thing watch be aware you know the cognitive energy the cognitive response is to, to, to see it to observe it to know what's happening and at least at that awareness stage you can you know take whatever precautions you deem necessary uh, well, this is a potpourri of stuff this time Obamacare it's designed to wreck us it's designed to to take our wealth it's designed to get our information uh, to be another reason to jail those who don't comply what can we do about all this the illegal uh, and unconstitutional dictates that are coming out of the executive branch now not to mention the stuff the bureaucrats do ladies and gentlemen it's time for non-compliance how do we how do we react to this? We act. We don't comply. We resist. Okay? People lining up, you know, they were told this. You know, if you register your guns, they're going to take them. You know, they can see them taking them in New York. They can, we can see them taking them in California. And those people in Connecticut line up to register their guns. You know, uh, I mean, we just are a bunch of sheep. Aren't we? we're, we're, we're no better than the, the Germans were when the Nazis were getting in control. And it's going to end badly, ladies and gentlemen. Very badly. Uh, I thought I'd better bring this up because uh, a lot of people aren't making the connection. Uh, you remember the Boston bombing? Uh, Tamerlan Tsarnaev, we found out. Uh, of course was in fact a CIA operative and the FBI had been using him also they knew who he was that whole situation them pretending they didn't know who the brothers was was a was an act uh, but we did find out that he went to Chechnya several times uh, was was sent there as a as an agent uh, for whatever purposes by the CIA we know that Al-Qaeda be them Chechnyans or anybody else are funded by the intelligence agencies of the West, the CIA in particular, and trained. The whole Syrian thing, you know, that, that came out really strong then if you were paying attention at all, that our government was supporting Al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria and elsewhere. But the, the point is, it, was really, it really came out at that point in time. The whole thing with Benghazi and then the, 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 the attempt to go to war in Syria, to be on the side of the same people that are slaughtering Christians whole families, young girls. <sighs> what an evil government we have. Anyway, back to Russia. The Russians stood against our, our attempts to invade Syria, and uh, Prince Bandar of Saudi Arabia said that if, if they stood in the way, if the Russians stood away, that they'd pay them back with terrorist bombings uh, in Russia. And it's funny that, that this hardly gets out. Of course, in the mainstream media, it doesn't get out at all or very, very little, and they don't make the connections to show what's going on here. Saudi Arabia is funding these Chechnyans now, helping the CIA, and they are bombing the Russians. That's who's doing this, the Saudi Arabians and, and Western intelligence services through the Chechnyan rebels. Al-Qaeda, that section of Al-Qaeda, okay? That's what's happening here. And the Russians know this, and they've they talk about it. They, this, this is talked about in the foreign press, but you just don't hear it here in the West. Saudi Arabia, huh? And other things come out. Uh, House Bill 428. You all need to call your congressmen and tell them to support this. What is House Bill 428? Well, a congressman from North Carolina has introduced this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot his name already. That's because these things come to me as I'm talking. I didn't really prepared to talk about this. 
Uh, House Bill 428 uh, is going to require President Obama to declassify 28 pages of a report to show who the um, financial support nations were for 9-11, the attack on us. And I don't, I'm just going to say it's obviously Saudi Arabia. Most of the, the, the supposed terrorists on 9-11 were from Saudi Arabia, yet we go attack Afghanistan and Iraq, you know. Um, and you can see now why, because the Saudis are trying to gain control and the West is trying to gain control. But at any rate, um, this 28-page report will tell us who funded it. And what I want to point out is this. Who did Bush fly out of? Who, first of all, who did the Bushes have as business partners? The Saudi Arabians in particular, and some specifics were the bin Ladens. And the Bush administration, when nobody else could fly after 9-11, the Bush administration made sure that the bin Ladens could fly out of the country, the Saudis. The connections are obvious. It was an inside job done with the help of Saudi Arabia and I'm not sure who else. At least I wouldn't want to say at this point in time. But you need to call up House Bill 428 and uh, let's see if we can get this exposed. Good luck, I know, but it would be nice. Uh, I think I've covered everything here pretty much. Let me just look at my notes. Oh, <laughs> how could I have forgotten this one? You know, in Italy, there was a 60-year-old guy who basically took an 11-year-old boy out of a backyard and had forced sex with him. And now that 60-year-old has been exonerated because the 11-year-old said he was in love with the man. <laughs> now this actually was going on in Britain too, if you'll remember. In Britain, they have this big thing because of the Jimmy Seville thing that, you know, older men can, can have things with 13-year-olds, that that's no longer considered pedophilia. Do you see who's taking charge and twisting us here? They go after somebody like Alan West, who has a passion for his wife, and rightly so, God sanctioned, and now they're, they're picking on that and they're going and giving all of these pedophilia rights to all these people around, you know, everywhere. Homosexual rights, all that. And again, nothing against the homosexuals if you keep it there, but the point is, you know, this is a militancy and it's coming from a very evil place, okay? So Italy did that, said the guy didn't commit a crime because the boy loved him. In California, transgender bathrooms, and the boys and girls can decide which bathroom they're going to use. You people in California really want to stay with those degenerates in that state? I'm just amazed. Um, as I said, this pedophilia thing is is probably the, the biggest sign when it rears its head that, that Luciferian Satanists are involved, and it's it's really, really bad stuff. And wherever it's connected, you need to shun it and do your best to, to turn on it and destroy it. Yes, destroy it. Just like they did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, just like that. Another example, you may remember the Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders saying they were going to teach five and six-year-olds in kindergarten how to masturbate. Yeah, yeah you go look it up. You, you guys who are, you know, watch this stuff know that I'm telling you the truth. And they're trying to make this you know, everywhere now. Common Core, you know, all this sexual education and all that. So what do we do then? Again, got to know your enemy. Got to be non-compliant with illegal, unconstitutional, I'm not, I don't even want to call them laws, dictates, I'll put it that way. Uh, resist to the best of your ability, and if they come to take your guns, be prepared to fight back. Don't give them up. Not 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 just turn them over. Bad idea. Because I'm going to get you one way or the other anyway. Okay, so I guess that's about all. Uh, I may have missed something. You know, I don't really do a lot of preparation. I sometimes write a few notes down, just so I'll touch on the key points. The basic thing is, is that like I've always said, prepare, prepare physically, prepare mentally, prepare spiritually. Uh, 
bond up your love with your loved ones and your friends because that's the only thing that's going to carry us through this. I always say I don't know when I'll see you again and that goes for this time as well. I'm not quoting a whole lot of scripture, actually none of it this time, although I did mention Sodom and Gomorrah. But uh, the evil in this, in this day and age is beyond anything that we have seen before. The good in this age, oh, here we go. <laughs> Jesus said, greater things will you do than I have done because I go to the Father. Wow. <laughs> so it's both sides, right? But uh, we're going to suffer a lot under this thing if we don't turn it around. And as you know, I don't think we're going to be able to. There's another scripture and it says that, uh, you know, the, the uh, beast made war upon the saints and prevailed. And they know that, you know, as I said, the Bible is there as the evils. Um, basically, it's, it's their operations order just like the Bible should be ours. They just do it from the evil side. So this is a crazy thing that's going on, but choose the right, choose good, choose life, choose liberty, choose love, and shun anything that isn't in there. Basically shun fear. And again, am I a fear monger? No, I'm, I'm, I'm warning you. Know, I'm giving you the information, as many are like me, so that you can remain living, remain with life, liberty, and love.